Hey guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Let's begin today's current affairs and the rest will be talked in the video itself. So guys, the very first question that we have here is who has been appointed as a chairperson of the high powered committee on Char Dham Mahamar Vikas Pariyoji. So guys, the right answer here is A.K. Sikri, who himself has served as the former judge in the Supreme Court itself. Now guys, there is an amazing fact attached to this committee and that fact is that Supreme Court in itself has constituted this committee. Now it is a very rare phenomenon, right? When the Supreme Court in itself intervenes in the central government scheme. Now what is the reason for which the Supreme Court had to intervene and what is the controversy regarding this Char Dham Mahamarg Vikas Pariyojana? Let's discuss that. So guys, as I have told you the new appointment. Now this Char Dham Mahamarg Vikas Pariyojana in English is known as Char Dham Highway Development Project. So from the name itself, it is really evident that this Pariyojana is to develop the highways across the Char Dham. Okay, now these Char Dham is basically the four pious pilgrimage sites in India. Now guys, but here is a trick and that trick is that the Char Dham that we usually talk about are the Char Dhams located in different states of India. First is in Uttarakhand, second is in Gujarat at uh, Dwarka, third is in Odisha at Puri, then we have uh, in Tamil Nadu, Rameshwara. Okay, so these are the four Char Dhams originally we can see. And we have another Char Dham which is also known as Chota Char Dham, which is entirely located in Uttarakhand. And here we have four sites, you have Kedarnath, you have uh, Badrinath, you have Gangotri and you have Yamnutri. So this guys, this scheme is particularly for the development of highways across these Char Dhams, okay, the Kedarnath, Badrinath, Gangotri and Yamnutri. So through this highway, all these four pilgrimage sites will be connected. And this highway scheme will definitely give a boost to the defense ministry as well because it will help the ministry in moving the personnel and ammunition at a very quick time across the India-China border. Okay, whenever there is an escalation across the border, easily they can provide the uh, arms and ammunition. But guys, here is a very, we can say, big problem and that problem is that while developing the highways, a lot of trees were being cut. And this is, guys, really hazardous for the environment. So this drew the attention of the environmentalists and they filed the petition in the Supreme Court. Thus, Supreme Court had to enter into this scenario and it formed a high-level committee, high-powered committee, which is judged, which is chaired by a judge of Supreme Court itself. Okay, so this committee basically will analyze the impact of the project on the entire Himalayan region or the of uh, environmental impact um, of this project. Now guys, there is another committee that is the oversight committee that was formed by the Supreme Court itself and Justice Sikri is again chairing this committee and the purpose of this committee is to check whether the uh, project is being done under the uh, compliance framework or not, okay, whether the environment compliances are being followed by the ministry or not. So that is the purpose of these two committees. Now I hope that this news is clear, but wait, we have certain more things to discuss from this news. So guys, the project, the Cha Chota Char Dham uh, Vikas Pariyojana, uh, Road Vikas Pariyojana has envisaged the creation of roads worth 900 kilometers, okay? So this much of stretch will be developed under this uh, under this project that will connect all these sites in Uttarakhand. Now in December 2021 only, Supreme Court had allowed the development of these three corridors or we can say these three highways, Rishikesh to Mana, Rishikesh to Gangotri, Tanakpur to Pitrogar. Okay, and guys, each of these highways are 10 meter wide. Okay, so the width is really something that matters here and you need to know the width. So guys, this widening I have already told you because wide roads provide a lot of uh, facilities for the arms and ammunition to move quickly. So that is all about this question. Now let's discuss the second question. Which of the following statements is incorrect about the Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Yojana? So first let's discuss the statements and then we will be in a position to judge which is correct or which is incorrect with respect to this scheme. 
so the scheme offers a basket of 1451 drugs and 240 surgical instruments at subsidized rates pradhan mantri jan aushadhi pariyojana is under implementation since 2008 nutraceutical products like food supplements and immunity bars have been added to the basket seven it enabled pradhan mantri bharatiya jan aushadhi pariyojana where houses are operational in, in india none of the so guys here option d is the right answer not seven we have three operational plus one ready to operate okay ready to start operations uh, warehouse is there now what is the scheme why particularly is this scheme in the news let's discuss that first and then you will understand what is this warehouse wala thing okay because i know that here is a confusion and i understand that confusion to banta hi hai because we haven't reached to that point so let's discuss the scheme first and the news first. so guys we all know that under this scheme subsidized medicines are provided okay and we have the surgical instruments also that are provided at subsidized rates so the subsidies are provided across a wide range of products and if you would want to put it into quantitative terms then we have 1451 drugs and 240 surgical instruments that are provided through the pradhan mantri bharat jan aushadhi kendra pariyojana kendras okay now nutraceutical products basically your immunity boosters your food supplements all of such kinds of products will now be provided at subsidized rates at these kendras under this scheme so guys this is the scheme so the scope of this scheme has been widened this is the news now let's discuss the scheme currently we have 8675 pradhan mantri bharatiya jan aur jan aushadhi pariyojana kendras Uh, that are functioning in different uh, districts across the country now we have three it enabled warehouses that are already functioning at gurugram chennai and guwahati but one is completely ready but it has not started the operations and it is located in surat so guys all these cities are important for you to memorize what is the target with respect to the scheme so 10500 kendras will be opened and six warehouses will be developed under the scheme by the year 2025 so this is guys the target and i hope that i uh, have no need here to mention how much this is important from your exam point of view so guys here we have talked about the subsidies that are provided on the prices of the medicines let's discuss what kind of subsidy and what is the percentage of the subsidy so guys subsidy is clearly on the price of the medicine but how much so 50% is guys the minimum subsidy that you would get on the average price of the medicine okay so suppose you go to buy crocin in the in the kendra okay so the rate at which the crocin will be sold in the market 50% subsidy on that rate will be provided to you at these kendras under the scheme okay so guys the subsidies extend sometimes to 90% also to 80 to 90% also some medicines you will get at a discount of 80 to 90% as well at these kendras so guys i would say that personally i believe that this is a really good initiative on the part of the government and remember that this scheme is in um, is under operation since 2008 okay why did i highlight it because it has not been launched during the modi tenure it is since 2008 now we have talked about the prices of the medicines but which agency decides the price we also need to know that so it is national Pri pharmaceutical pricing authority but guys this authority also does not fix the prices for all the medicines in india it only fixes or regulates rather the prices of the medicines that are mentioned in the first schedule of the drugs prices control order 2030 okay for the rest of the medicines which are not mentioned in the schedule the manufacturers of those medicines decide the price of those medicines okay and in the in this list particularly we have the very life saving essential drugs okay so here the question ends now we are on the next question how much cagr does the fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund and we search to increase the fish production in the country to 20 million tons by 2022 to 2023 so guys here the right answer is 8 to 9% first of all what is the cagr so cagr guys compound annual growth rate okay a fixed growth rate or we can say a nearly fixed growth rate okay that this 
fund is envisaging in the fisheries sector. First of all, why is this fund in the news? So recently, Odisha government has signed an MOU with NAPAD for creating the fisheries and infrastructure. Okay, basically under this MOU, NAPAD will provide funding to the Odisha government, which the Odisha government will utilize in creating the fisheries infrastructure. And this entire exercise is being done to increase the fish production in the state. Now, how much funding will be provided? So it is rupees 119.8 crores under the fisheries uh, aquaculture infrastructure development fund. So that from here guys, this fund is in the news and from here the question is where. Now, what is this fund exactly? Let's discuss that because it is a central government fund. Therefore, we need to discuss it. It was <coughs> launched in 2018 union budget announced basically and then subsequently it was launched in the same year also. Administrator of this fund is Department of Fisheries Ministry of under the Ministry of Fisheries Animal Husbandry and Dairy. Since it is a fund therefore it is imperative on our part to memorize the corpus of this fund that is 7522.48 crores. What is the purpose of this fund? Clearly from the name itself Fisheries Aquaculture Infrastructure Development Fund. So this is the purpose. Now in the purpose itself the very fixed target that this fund has given is that by the year 2020 the fisheries production will be increased to 15 million tons under the blue revolution. Now guys we do not know whether this fund was able to achieve its target or not because we do not have any official news from the government side regarding this. Okay. Now we have discussed the very preliminary facts regarding the fund. Now it is the time for us to discuss the targets of this fund. So the FIDF aims to achieve a sustainable development, sustainable growth of 8 to 9 percent to increase the fish production in the country to 20 million tons by 2022 to 2023. Okay, so if this fund is able to increase the infrastructure in India, okay, and then with the increase in the fisheries infrastructure, if we are able to attain this much of growth rate sustainably, okay, uh, then we are in the position of having a fish production of 20 million tons by 2022 to 2023. Now it is for us to see whether we have achieved this target or not under this fund. Next is that this is a fund. Obviously it will provide finances. So finances will be provided through certain agencies and those agencies are NABAD, National Cooperative Development Corporation and Scheduled Banks. So basically Department of uh, Fisheries provides funds to the FIDF or basically allocates fund under this uh, Fisheries Infrastructure Development Fund and then uh, through this fund the amount is provided to NABAD, NCDC and Scheduled Bank. And then the funds are further allocated or distributed to states and UTs and borrowers. Okay, so this is the entire uh, line of distribution of funds under this scheme. National Fisheries Development Board, Hyderabad is the implementing agency of this fund. Do remember the location of this fund, okay, of this board, which is the implementation implementing agency. Next, guys, is the terms and conditions of the finances that are provided under this fund. And this is, guys, I would say the most important part of this scheme. So 3% interest subvention will be given and 5% will be charged. So 5% is the interest rate, 3% is the interest subvention and 8% becomes our total interest rate that will be charged on this, uh, on the loans that are given under FIDF. Okay, now out of this 8%, 3% is being provided by the government. Okay, it is the interest subvention and 5% will be charged from the borrowers. Okay, I hope that this is clear. Now, loan lending period will be 5 years from this much to this much. So, probably by next year, the uh, tenure of the scheme would end and we may see the extension of this one. Maximum repayment uh, period is 12 years, which includes 2 years of moratorium. Then, guys, Another important point is that the loan that will be provided, 80% of the project cost will be covered through the loan and rest 20% guys should be contributed by the borrowers themselves. So that was all about the fisheries fund. 
now we are moving to the next question which state has been ranked at the first position in the scotch governance report card 2021 so here we have andhra pradesh at the first position first of all what is this so this uh, scotch governance report card is basically an annual report released by the scotch group which is guys basically an independent think tank okay so it releases this report based on the performance of the states and uts in project implementation now let's see which state or ut has performed the best so here is the list of the states andhra pradesh west bengal odisha gujarat and maharashtra and i would recommend you all to memorize the top 5 states then in terms of uts we have andaman nicobar chandigarh daman and diu delhi and jammu kashmir ranking in the top 5 list now guys here is a trick and that trick is in front of you let's see how many of you can guess the trick okay so let me reveal it to you see the ranking of andaman and nicobar see the ranking of chandigarh see the rank of daman diu and delhi okay and you have jammu kashmir okay so ladakh so guys what is it why are the rankings given like this the reason is that scotch in itself has not provided a separate list for the states and uts okay the list is just one combined list covering the states and uts okay 35 states and uts were covered now i have provided you separately this thing because if the question asks you that which of the following uts are the best performing union territories in the scotch annual report then you should be in a position to answer that okay therefore i have provided all these uh, uts in terms of their performance so if you put a separate list of uts then this would be the result okay but if the exact ranking of these uts are asked from you in the examination then you would obviously tell the ranking that is given by the list okay for example if the ranking of delhi is asked so what would you say is it third uh, is it fourth or is it ninth obviously ninth so please do not get confused here and if you are confused then feel free to ask me i am ready to uh, explain it to you uh, n number of times if you ask me this okay now guys here is the list of star states performance and catching up so you would see that the chronology that we have seen here is again followed here it's just the classification that has differentiated star states are andhra west bengal odisha gujarat maharashtra and then we have performers telangana uttar pradesh madhya pradesh assam and himachal pradesh then we have catching up states that are really trying hard to perform good bihar haryana jammu kashmir chatisgarh and rajasthan and here guys are the parameters okay now i would say that this list is provided here only for your information purpose do not try to memorize the uh, parameters or the scores given here okay and let me tell you that these are the national level scores the average of all the states and union territories but again i would say do not try to memorize the scores and parameters because they are huge in number next question is the chairman of irda so here is devashish pand appointment committee of the cabinet appoints this uh, person has appointed this person so here guys i would like to end this session if you like the content provided by us then do not forget to subscribe the channel hit the bell notification like this video and share it among your friends